Hello and welcome to a Spinnaker Spoiler Cast for Season 2 of Stranger Things. I'm Logan Anstead. Today I'm joined by two very special guests. Alexander Torres Perez. And Billy Galang. All right, guys. So first, the way we do this, this is we're going to do a spoiler-free quick review for you guys. Is it worth watching? Is it as good as the first season? We're going to dive into that, and then we're going to go into our full-on spoiler thing. We'll be sure to give you a big spoiler warning before that happens. But first off, what did you guys think of season two of Stranger Things? I thought it was amazing. I honestly thought it was better than the first season. We get introduced to some new characters. You learn more about old characters. And I think, honestly, they develop the characters very well this season. And I honestly, like I said before, it's better than the first season. And I recommend it. Um, you know, I I've, I've love the season as well. I am I feel it's better than the first season by the slightest of margins. Um and, you know, I think the main reason for that, I think the character development in the season was fl- was fantastic. You know, what they did with characters like Eleven and Hopper and Mike, and even what they did with the new characters and their development, um, I thought it was all fantastic, and I highly recommend it for anybody who likes Stranger Things. I agree, too. Um, I'm still up in the air about whether it's better than the first season, because the first season I just kind of had that charm to it that I don't yeah. know if you'll ever, you're ever going to be able to recapture. Yeah. And I don't think that's something to put on the Duffer Brothers at all. Like, Absolutely. You, it's yeah. always harder to follow up, like the sophomore slump kind of thing. This is definitely <laughs> not the sophomore slump, but I think it's still hard to match yeah. what it was. I think it's still definitely something, even if it's not necessarily better than the first season, which I'll admit could very well change my opinion, could at least in time because this is an initial reaction yeah um but i think it's definitely still worthy a worthy follow-up to the first season oh for sure Um, and oh like um i know you said that it had a charm but it kind of also has its own different kind of charm with like the arcade instead of playing D &D or like the music choice was very big and i think it it has, it still has that charm, though, mm-hmm. in my opinion. The biggest thing for me was that the, and I've, I've seen a lot of people who reviewed it and who, who watched it as well talk about this, the first four episodes were a kind of crawl for me. Yeah. Um, granted, there was a lot of setting up, you know, of things. I mean, we saw in the very first episode there was a setup of something we'll talk about later that completely stemmed from everything we knew in the first season, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the first four episodes to me felt a bit of a crawl. The last five were action-packed. Um, which made up for it, but I think if it was a normal television series, like say the way The Walking Dead gets released, I would have been a lot more upset with the way it was, mm-hmm. simply because the pacing of the first four was so much slower than the last five. Yeah, no, absolutely, I think it releasing all at once definitely helps out. I think it, it would help out almost any TV show just because you don't have to sit there and wait week to week. So you know you don't have a week to dissect each mm-hmm. individual episode before the next one comes out. Um, I think, especially with the earlier part of the season, I feel like that definitely helped. See, yeah. when I was watching it, like, I loved the whole thing. I was like, yeah, give me more. Like, I never saw it as really slow. Maybe there was one part where I was like, okay. But that might have me- been just me getting tired from watching nine yeah. hours straight of television. <laughs> That's um, but I didn't realize how short Stranger Things was. It's only nine episodes. And yeah. I didn't realize that. I was like, where's where's the rest of it? Like, what is this? Like, I was kind of upset when it ended. Yeah. So, to wrap this up, let's give a quick... Out of five sales, because this is Spinnaker here. Oh, goodness. Sales. Our, our sales. out of five sales review for this, Billy. Uh, I'm going to go with four to five, or four and a half out of five, I should say. Oh, so, mm-hmm. ooh. Yeah. You got to give that extra half point there. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to give it a full five, because, you know, that's just... Initial reaction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna go a little bit lower. I'm going to go four out of five. I won't give it that half okay. sale. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to agree more with Alex. Um, I'm I'm tempted to give it a three point five out of oh. five, but wow. I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a four simply because it was so charming, um, in the way it just yeah. did everything. Um, the pacing really threw me off. Um, <laughs> in the first four, like it, it honestly I was just like, oh god, let me get through this. I had heard about it, so it's really? whatever. Yeah. I, um, but yeah. we'll talk about why that pacing was off right now as we get into the spoiler filled section. Spoiler. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right. You have five, four, three, two, one. God, Steve Harrington's great. Steve Harrington <laughs> Wow. <is> like, <laughs> he's arguably my favorite character now. Yeah. You know? It, it's amazing because he went from just kind of being a jerk in season one to being the less, of, less of a jerk. And then now, yes. you know, yeah, now he's, you know, kind of like watching over these kids. And it's kind of cool to watch. See yeah. And not them. only that, the combination of Steve with Dustin was <laughs> glorious. Like the fact that okay, so we know Steve as like kind of like 
the jerk. King Steve. Yeah, King Steve in season one. And then looking into season two, we see, like, how he's um, caring about Nancy. And then from Nancy, like, to being heartbroken. And you're kind of yeah. like, wow, I can relate with this jerk. And yeah. then he has, like, this little brother relationship with Dustin. And it's, like, giving girl advice the and all this. The <laughs> Was Which was best. great. His, his hair at the end was the greatest thing. Oh my gosh, it was incredible. His hair was flawless. <laughs> like, I love it. But I just think it was, the way they developed Steve was probably one of my favorite things about the season. Yeah. Oh. I just had to say that to get that out of the way, and I thought that was going to be that's, a good yes. thing. That's totally fine. But all right, now we're going to go kind of episode, <laughs> we're going to go kind of episode by episode. Let's just drop stuff in the studio. It's all good. We're um, good. So... Well, obviously, we'll run through some quicker than others, but let's start with episode one. Episode okay. one, we see the events, you know, with with Will and stuff coming to kind of a close. Uh, we see that he's going to Hawk or the Hawkins lab regularly now, mm -hmm. which is a kind of weird thing. We meet Mad Max, yes. um, Maxine for the first time, um, and Dustin and Lucas immediately become obsessed with her. <laughs> um, we meet uh, Billy for the first time, yes. uh, a new psychotic character we get to enjoy. Um, and then we find out that uh, Bob is a character, uh, <sighs> and Hopper seems a bit jealous. Yes. So. But also, we the intro for season two, mm -hmm. where we meet eight. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Very I true. Yeah. At the very, very beginning. Yeah. I totally brushed over that part. Uh, eight, the, the I guess, you know, the c counterpart to 11. Yeah, I think, honestly, because of 11, you have to figure, like, there's a 1 through 10. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of sets it up for future Absolutely. seasons. And I, it's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think that's the last we've seen of eight at all. Oh, absolutely. She'll, she'll oh, definitely sure be back. Um, and what we saw in season seven is there was a big, or season, season seven, seven. seven. <laughs> episode <laughs> seven was a giant focus on that aspect mm -hmm. of exactly. there are other people out here. Yes. Um, so yeah, the beginning of episode one, obviously, if you're in this part, you've hopefully watched all of Stranger Things. Either yeah, that or you're just at least a very supportive one. person of Spinnaker Television. <laughs> or do you um, really like spoilers? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, she, she has the ability to influence people's minds and make them see things that aren't there, mm -hmm. uh, which is a super interesting counterpart to Eleven who can just throw people at walls. Um, <laughs> so they both have their own way of doing things. I think, uh, and I've, I'm going to jump ahead to episode seven because we're talking about yeah, eight episodes. right now, which is great. This is... Eight is the person who her name is Keela. 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 So let's refer to her as Keela, so we don't confuse okay. eight the person with episode eight of Stranger Things. Okay. Keela ate the person. Um, <laughs> she didn't eat a person, but she <laughs> is the person. Keela um, has that ability. Uh, we see in the very beginning she's able to make a cop think that the wall is crumbling down on him, and so mm -hmm. he stops his car, yeah. which was kind of a mind blowing thing. I thought initially, I'm like, oh, okay. She can move stuff too. Yeah, that's and what then I you heard. see nothing happen. She just influenced the dude's and mind. And then you're mind blown yeah. when you see that. I, honestly, I didn't realize it until I watched uh, episode seven. I'm like, wait, didn't she make the building crumble? And then mm -hmm. I went back and rewatched it. Obviously, I'm like, oh no, she just made him see that it was crumbling. Yeah. yeah. So that I didn't see that at first. And so she has came. also she has her own mission, which mm -hmm. I think is so different from Eleven or Jane, <laughs> the person. <Yeah. laughs> but her mission to basically have revenge on whoever hurt her and whoever caused her to, like, basically... How would you explain it? Like I guess the, the people who put the them revenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah, And I think if when, when we get to episode seven, I almost said season seven, like you. Yeah. Yeah. We get to episode seven. I think I almost was an idiot. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think um, Keila is a very interesting and almost perfect contrast to Eleven. Yeah. Yes. Um, in the way that you know why she does what she does, uh, where she is, and everything like that. So. But they also have that similarity, just because they're like, like they refer to each other as sisters, mm -hmm. and so even though they're different, they have two completely different mindsets, it's kind of like they're also similar in a way. It's Absolutely. a weird comparison to make, but it's kind of like when people go to war and it's like that's your band of brothers or whatever. Like mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. And I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to throw in maybe, I don't think this was all girls that were in this facility. I think there were some males too, but yeah. I think you're going to have them like refer to each other once, if we see more people discovering each other, if they're still alive, you know, referring to them as like these are siblings because they've all been through this traumatic experience together. Um, and I just thought the dynamic of, like you were saying, the juxtaposition of their positions mm -hmm. on the people that hurt them. Like Eleven just wants to 
live a quote unquote normal life. And Keyleth's like, I want to get revenge on everyone who hurt all of us. Like, yeah. Well, and like I said, I think it kind of gets back into the influences they've had. I think yeah. you see, because in episode seven, jumping ahead here, um, you kind of see that with, with Keela. You kind of see her influence. The fact, you know, she says, I had a family when I escaped, but they couldn't they couldn't help me. Mm-hmm. She's like, your family can't help you. But obviously we see, you know, Hopper, Mike, they can all yeah. help yeah. Eleven Definitely. and steer her in that right and direction. And Keela's group is supporting mm-hmm. her in this because they're like, oh, she saved us because, like, I guess she kind of counseled them through, like, their mental issues and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and so even though they're, they're robbing and kind of, you know, pillaging places and just doing whatever the hell they want, um, that is Keela's support group as much as Keela is supporting yeah. stuff for them. Mm-hmm. The same dynamic works with Eleven, and as we saw at the end of the first episode, Eleven and Hopper, um, oh. which I totally did not expect to see Eleven this soon into the season. Really? The end of episode I, one is crazy. Well, it is. I, I expected to see her, but more trapped in the upside down. I didn't yes. expect to see her with Hopper. Well, yes. I didn't expect which, her to break out immediately following. Which, which by the way, those two need to get their own sitcom together. Oh my god! Yeah. I would watch the crap out of it. Yes, um, and also they have like this father-daughter relationship that yeah. I completely fell in love with, with especially with the history of Hopper losing his own daughter and basically being like a sour, like grumpy guy in season yeah. one. You kind of see throughout season two how he sees um, Jane as his or Eleven as his like daughter and how he's basically like eat your vegetables or yeah. no it's a continuation <laughs> of what it would have been with sarah yeah um, mm-hmm. and it's it's funny even though 11 i think if you compare ages is probably almost double the age that sarah was like it's kind of just like he's picking up where he left off and there's a mm-hmm. lot of there's a lot of recent media that's done that and sort of like the you know the whole losing a daughter father continues it with somebody else yeah. aspect but there's also that aspect of like my daughter has superpowers, yeah. and I don't know how to deal how with this. I think, I think that's a great touch in the later episodes because her story is very much her growing up and maturing, but they're able to do it in a different way than usual because mm-hmm. she has those superpowers, mm-hmm. and I think that really helps it out a lot. Um, so in, at the, in episode one, before we move on, um, we also see Barb's parents, um, yes. and we see... That that horrible, horrible, oh, we're leasing the house to hire a private detective to find our daughter. Yeah. Um, and obviously we see Nancy breaking down in the bathroom, having a tremendously hard time mm-hmm. dealing with the fact that she has to stay quiet. Um, Steve is trying to comfort her and be like, let's just go out and be normal teenagers for a night. And that spirals into kind of Steve's arc. But I, I do, the funniest thing was... Um, Nancy goes to the bathroom, is crying, and Steve is eating the Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> and for me, that was the funniest thing in the series. He's just like, it's finger like, yeah, I think it's great. Like, totally trying to like appease the pain. <laughs> but no, I think that that's an interesting dynamic because we also see the crazy uh, conspiracy guy who comes into play in yes. later episodes yeah. uh, fly up. Episode one was packed with a lot of character setups mm-hmm. that you didn't realize until later. I like out of the first four episodes, episode one was definitely probably the best. Um, yeah. I think it was a great setup for the remainder of the season, and I really loved what it had to offer. And yeah. they also had a little bit of foreshadowing in the arcade, because um, I'm not sure if you guys watched Beyond Stranger Things, where the characters... Oh, in... hell no. Oh, okay, well, I watched a little bit of it. They had that super fan guy, and like I've seen him on Twitter and stuff, and I was just like... I remember it's not that bad, when I used to watch The Walking Dead, like I would watch the after show right after I watched the regular Same. show. <laughs> and that stuff is like fun for a while, but it just becomes this crazy thing. We're not here to give a review of the, the after show. Because I haven't seen it, so it better not be. Well, yeah. one thing that the um, Duffer brothers said was that they had uh, Dragon's Lair on there. And yeah. it kind of foreshadows Mad Max, because there's the princess, and then there's Dustin. And, oh. uh, ah, you see? It's like... It gives you, like, a little insight into all the other, like, really cool small things. If there's anything I know about writers, snow means death. What? <laughs> yeah, snow. We winter, went over this very death. much in the Blade Runner. Yeah, in the Blade Runner. In the Blade Runner. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Um, so, moving on to some later episodes. We have uh, episode two. We see that Eleven had, how Eleven managed to escape, which mm-hmm. is immediately, almost immediately after she kind of got stuck in the Upside Down yeah. after mm-hmm. destroying the Demogorgon, she's able to walk through a hole in the school wall, I guess? She yeah. made um, a hole. So it's it's super interesting. Um, this is also the episode that we see uh, Nancy and Steve split off when she says, it's bullshit. <laughs> it's Bullshit, the the she drunk did. girl, I don't really love you thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's actually true. Um, oh, it was heartbreaking. It was it was kind of sad, and I thought Steve was going to fall into that whole, oh, I hate everything arc. But then he's just like, he found something else to do. 
I think through Dustin later, Absolutely. and mm-hmm. we talked about that. But um, episode two honestly wasn't super revealing of much besides mm-hmm. oh, Eleven and Hopper found each yeah. other. That's great. I think it was almost necessary. It was, um, and I don't have an issue with that because I, I do like almost almost like the origin of how Eleven kind of got back, mm-hmm. and it builds her relationship with Hopper. And once again, that's that's probably my favorite like character duo of the entire season. So I, I didn't have huge issues with this episode, um, but I can definitely see why some people would think it was a little, one of the more yeah. slower episodes. Like like you said, um, I think it was necessary just because we needed to know how she got out of the Upside Down, how she kind of met up with um, Hopper. And yeah. like. And they continue those flashbacks mm-hmm. in episode yes. three as well. Absolutely. Yes, and then we are also introduced, we finally get to see Mad Max in, uh, or Maxine yeah. in episode two and how the guys are kind of already obsessed like, with her. like, and she it is, to be. she is badass. Can I just <laughs> say, I love her. <laughs> um, we also see in this when they go trick or treating, Will having more severe episodes coming yeah, on. Mm-hmm. They get worse and worse kind yeah. of as the season progresses. Um, and moving into episode three is when Bob, who is Joyce's boyfriend, <laughs> um, Bob, another character whose arc started out as who the hell is this guy, and ended up with oh damn it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he advises, well, just, you know, stand up to it. I just stood my ground, and I just faced my fears, which may not be the best advice going forward. Yeah, because it's, the thing is, everybody thinks it's a nightmare. It's not actually a nightmare. It's, it's very real. Yeah, well, so. And then that scene where he's giving advice, like, with the music, it seems a little kind of like, is Bob evil kind of thing yeah. and it was kind of weird it was, it was pulling you yeah. a different way no, that's what so many people go. thought thought bob was gonna turn i'm like bob you can't turn like yeah. i loved him just because he was sam from lord of the world <laughs> <Mr. Frodo. laughs> yeah Mr. Frodo. like sam can't be evil yeah. <laughs> well not only that like um especially with that advice i think he was genuinely just trying to be that nice parent figure mm-hmm. for Will and then it kind of backfired because he just didn't know yeah, and it, yeah. it's kind of like oh Bob yeah. <laughs> like, I feel like that was a lot of it was oh Bob <laughs> and he was amazing can <laughs> I just say he he provided that like comedy he was so different from everyone else and it was great like I loved Bob we also saw in episode three uh the first uh I guess kind of foreshadowing of the little dart character uh that ends up becoming a demo dog um, the dog, Demo Dog, is the funniest. Thing. <laughs> the, Demo Dog. The, whole, the funniest thing about the dart thing for me is that w- everybody knows what it is initially. Like we know, like oh, this is not a thing that mm-hmm. we're supposed to be interacting with. And Dustin's just like, I've discovered a new species. Like, come on, kid, you saw this stuff last year. Come on, well, kid. Well, it was also it didn't look mm-hmm. like a Demogorgon at but, all. But when it grew, come on. Okay, when it grew, he should have known. Especially mm-hmm. when um when it was eating the cat. And I think yeah. by that point, he was like. Oh. Oh yeah, he realized this yeah. isn't good. By, by the time he, the the uh, d- baby demogorgon or demodog, eats eats, <laughs> eats eats the cat. Like he's at, at that point, he t- he definitely tries and captures it and definitely mm-hmm. tries to get rid yeah. of it. But and um, the, but that's when we see the Steve arc yeah. too. So I, think, I want to thank Dart for starting the yes. Steve arc. And the re uh, revival of the bat. Can we just? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's kind of like it's kind of juxtaposed with like I, I've, I, we talk about the Walking Dead, but like uh, Negan's kind of like this evil character oh, who's bad as like this foreboding thing, and you see Steve with this <laughs> bat full of nails, and you're like, "Fuck yes, yeah, Steve!" <laughs> the like, seal. Just, yeah, like it's just like this great thing. Um, but yeah, um, what is it? Dart is, Dart like escapes, you know, from the yeah. AV club, yep. and that's when Will has like his up to this point his weirdest hallucination yet, which is all this stuff coming to get him. Um, and, and then it does get him at the end of episode three. Because he tries yes. to follow Bob's advice. Yeah. Instead Stand of running your away. Yeah. What, which I kind of, like, I kind of applaud Will for that, for standing his ground, because I know if that huge shadowy thing, which I think they did amazing with the shadow, because they had no face, and it was just equally as terrifying. Yeah. And I think the fact that... I don't even know what it is yet. Like, we still don't fully understand well, it's, its powers. I mean, we know it's the hive mind and all this stuff, but, like, we see we see at the... Okay, I guess we're. I'm going to skip all the way to the, the very end. Well, the let's, let's just continue on, yeah. and then we'll get to that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, beginning of episode four, Joyce is, you know, trying to find Will in the field, mm-hmm. and they can't understand why they can't break him out of this thing. Um, Nancy and Jonathan go to try to meet Barb's mother, mm-hmm. um, but end up getting pulled in by Hawkins, but... I- in the process, get the recording. It's plan. potential. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. So um, I guess <laughs> I guess we'll jump around a little bit here um, because this is when um, Dart is, is revealed to also be the the baby version of a Demogorgon in episode four. Um, but the big thing is chapter five is where the action really starts. Mm -hmm. um, Hopper discovers the tunnels, and I was super worried Hopper was going to die. Um, they can't kill Hopper. Um, I wasn't super worried Hopper was yeah. going to die. If it was Game of Thrones, maybe. <laughs> um, but, but or at not. least we wouldn't see him for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but kind of the one thing I do want to say about, uh, I think it was episode four, um, was the scene with Hopper and Eleven, um, where they get into that ma big fight. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, that, that to me was, like I said, with those two, I love those two together. Um, that to me was kind of like the the biggest point in, in Eleven's character at, at the beginning because you know he calls her out. He's like, you need to understand there's consequences to your actions. Yeah, you need yeah. to grow up. Yeah. yeah, you're a brat and you need to grow up. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty accurate. He gets rid yeah. of the TV and she destroys and, the house. And I like how like even though she does have these powers, he was not afraid. He was like, you know what? I'm still your I'm still your guardian. You're basically your parent. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to listen to me and I don't care if I'm even in danger. Like yeah. the fact that like when she was screaming and everything just kind of collapsed in and he was like, "Oh yeah, you're cleaning this up." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but I think the thing with that is like, yeah, she's being a brat and she's coming off as like a normal teenager with superpowers, mm -hmm. but at the same time, she has a very good reason to be upset. I mean, oh, she's been sure. holed up for yeah, a she's year. Been, she's been trapped yeah. in that house for, yeah, a year, and then before that, she was trapped in a lab for however many years. So, yeah. I mean, you know, she has a, good, a very good point of, as well. I think I think the point of that episode also led into episode seven when, you know, mm -hmm. she constantly said, he keeps telling me soon. He keeps telling me soon. Absolutely. And it's never mm -hmm. soon. And you, you see him later apologize for yeah. that, like, giving her unrealistic expectations of what would happen and stuff. And mm -hmm. It's kind of like the the theme of this season for me seemed like normalcy. Like you see it in the first few episodes, like all Hawkins, the town is trying to do is return to a level of normalcy. You know, like you have a kid who was presumed dead, who's suddenly back from the dead. You have a lab that basically had like horrible explosion things happen. You had a bunch of FBI slash whatever people killed in the school randomly. You have all this stuff in the town that's just super screwed up. And then in the first beginning, you know, episodes of season two, everybody's just kind of walking around like everything's normal, but you can tell that it's not. Well, another thing is people didn't accept Will, the kids, and um, only a select few people of Hawkins knew what was actually going on. Yeah. So to everyone else, they're just like, yeah, this is my quiet little town. Nothing has really happened. Yeah, and I think they even kind of touched on that at the very end when they talk with the news reports at the end. And yeah. they're like, this Hawkins, this small town not used to it is all of a sudden, you know, in the, in the national spotlight. That's at the very end. But yes. yeah. So I, I think from the, the point is for most of the people in that town, it was still relatively And normal. we see it with the, you know, the, cons the conspiracy guy. And we see it also with... Lucas trying to explain to, to Max, mm -hmm. you know, what had happened. Like, everyone who's, who's trying to understand this either believes it but knows that no one else will or just is like, all right, can you stop making up stories? Yeah. Like, that's how Max reacted exactly. to Lucas's mm -hmm. thing. Um, she's like, that was great, but the plot needed work or whatever. He's, <laughs> like, he's like, I'm serious, and she didn't realize it until he, like, literally, like, covered her mouth and be mm -hmm. like, you have to shut up or we're going to die. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, I don't know, it, it was, like, a super interesting arc for me to see. But... Let's talk a little bit about Will and the whole possessed situation. Because I'm yeah. just like, it was five episodes of The Exorcist, is what it <laughs> seemed like for me. Yeah, but he did, he did do a very, very good job with it, though. Yeah. Something's always happening to Will. <laughs> I feel so bad for that kid. I know. But at the same time, I think his brother, Jonathan, gave him really good advice where it was kind of like, I forget what episode because they all kind of melt together, but um, where he was like, "Why do you want to be normal?" Like, yeah. and then yeah. they're no, no one. No, he's like, no one, no one cool or good ever was normal. And then Bob comes along. He's like, "Oh, normal with C is fun." Yeah. <laughs> You're like, "Oh, Bob." <laughs> let's go, let's go watch Mr. Mom. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, also in episode five, we see Eleven visit her actual mother mm -hmm. for the yes. first time, get through to her, and find out that her mother has some powers at least from yeah. whatever LSD yeah. testing shows her what she was talking about when she says uh, through to the left four to the right rainbow room all that stuff mm. um, basically the whole process Freak. of what her mother went through to <laughs> yeah. try to get her daughter back yeah yeah, and, and essentially that that whole lead that leads to what happens in episode 7 with uh, with, with Ka Kali Kali yeah. Kali and um, no like her, her and her mom that was one of those emotional moments um, her you know finally meeting her mom but then realizing her mom's kind of in this state um, 
the one thing I did question at first, but kind of didn't afterwards, was the other the other woman how she was just like, oh yeah, you must be her daughter because you know. Yeah. No, but she but she didn't remember because she was on the phone or whatever, and she was like calling somebody. She's like, "Yeah, well, there's this kid here," and I don't think she fully believed it. Be, yeah. But the thing is, she I, I don't know because she, she did ask for Hopper when she was on the phone. Mm. She didn't just like it wasn't like she was just talking to a random police. She yeah. was asking for a specific person. That specific person was somebody that she met before in that situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So I don't know if she didn't necessarily believe her as much as she was just she didn't want to deal with it or, something. or wanting help or something yeah. because mm-hmm. she didn't know what to do. Um, we also see at the end of episode five, uh, the first, I guess, reveal of ties Will has to the tunnels and, you know, the whole upside down thing Mm -hmm. where he, that was the creepiest thing ever where he's just on the ground. Like, I don't even know how to describe Mm -hmm. what that was. It was like a seizure. Is that, oh, when they start burning the area after they save Hopper. He likes it cold. Yeah. Because like, and then. Well, this leads into the next episode, but I really like the fact that it kind of all ties together. Like, mm-hmm. Will is able to see both sides, the yeah. upside mm-hmm. down world, the real world, and the fact that he can still be affected in the real world by the upside down world, I think was yeah. incredibly great. And <laughs> we, we saw in this season, too, like, um, the upside down in the real world or the world that we know is a lot closer than you think. Mm-hmm. Uh, it may be just for this season, yeah. um, cause we, we don't know how they'll lead it. I'm sure they're going to show oh, more and more sure. times, but like, I mean, it was literally beneath their feet. We saw it with the rotting pumpkins. We saw it with, you know, how the town was being affected, um, in terms of like people getting sick and stuff like that. And can we just call, have a call out to that camera angle when Hopper first gets into the tunnels yeah. and the camera just kind of turns upside down and I'm just like, <laughs> oh, oh it's, shit. It's, <laughs> it's just beautiful. Oh. I, I remember seeing that in the trailer for the film. I'm like, that can't be something that like, they actually yeah. put in the show. And, and they like, actually oh. did. And you're like, yeah. So one thing I never expected was that they would get an, <clears throat> they would get an influence <laughs> from, from Space Jam. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's digging the giant hole, all I could think of was Space Jam when he's digging the giant hole in the golf course trying to find Michael Jordan. Oh I'm like, he's going to go down there, he's going to find the Looney Tunes in the upside down. So that well, would have made the show so much dogs. better. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> but then, chapter six, we see Will with his memory loss. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't realize it initially, but it's because this virus, this thing, thing is this taking shadow. him over more. Yeah. Um, and I, th- oh God, I just have to speak, we're jumping ahead. I'm going to jump ahead for a second, but episode nine, where he's doing the Morse code, that is the most clever shit ever. No, that was fantastic. That was and awesome. It makes sense for yeah. Will because he's part of that small that, that group small of nerd like nerdy club. guys, yeah. Yeah. part of the AV club. So it made complete sense that this kid knows Morse code. And, and it yeah. was, it was just subtle enough as well. Mm-hmm. And know. they, they drug him in this episode cause they realized like, oh shit, it's not him right now. And the revenge thing where he sends the, he's like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Yeah. That. Yeah. I, I believe the title of the episode was The Spy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, everybody I was watching with thought it was either the guy who was, like, the journalist or it was Bob. Mm-hmm. But it was actually Will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was fantastic. Which is crazy and the, the one thing they did do well with Bob was they did do a, a very good job of misdirection because they planted just enough seeds to make you think, hey, maybe this guy is not okay. But, you know, he, was, mm-hmm. he ended up being Bob. It's, so. Yeah, and then not only that, Bob also played... <laughs> a way bigger role than I expected um, in this season, especially when it came to, he's such a, like a puzzle guy and he got, yeah. he was literally the reason why Hopper is still alive. Yeah, like, because, oh, oh my god, yeah, I didn't even talk about the scene where Will just draws the entire outline of the town. Yeah, the, the tunnels. tunnels. Yeah. Where did he get that much cr- many crayons from, man? That's what I'm wondering, because they showed him, like, screw, screw yeah. it profusely. I know they used, like, for paper, They she started out with, like, sheets of paper, and then it went to wrapping paper and basically anything they had mm-hmm. in the house. Yeah. But that's my question. Where the hell did these crayons and markers? Uh, just had, like, two, three when he was school? When he was eight, his mother gave him a box of crayons, 120 okay. colors. So his 120 <laughs> pack of colors just lasted him, what? But it was all, like, the same? Four or five years? It was all the same, like, <laughs> it was all the same, like, four colors. Yeah. Because they were all... Exactly. So it was, like, it wasn't like he was using 120 different colors. Did she run to the store seven times? <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is the, the shit that John, if he was here, and actually enjoyed Stranger Things, <laughs> just nitpick all day you'd be like where did all these crayons come from <laughs> and it's just something that i'm willing to throw away. like oh okay that's one thing they didn't you know they kind of glanced over it's like yeah that happens. okay it's yeah. fine <laughs> um but we also see chapter six uh we see that dart is one of many yes um, because steve will try to confront him but uh he gets attacked by a swarm 
So is there a difference between the Demogorgon from season one and the Demodogs in season two? I from what I understand, yes. Because I don't think because so. if there isn't, then that I guess would bother me a little bit. The fact that it took them so much to defeat one Demogorgon in season one, and then they're able to defeat like yeah. however many in season two, just like that. My theory is that the Demodogs actually turn into the Demogorgon. We just didn't see the full the molting, full molting process, and so that would make sense why they can defeat the Demodog mm -hmm. a lot easier because yeah. it's still a baby form of the Demogorgon. But you also have to think, season one, two, was the first time that the gate was open. And it was that small ripple in Hawkins Lab, and that's all it was. And so the Demogorgon was that big thing that they had to deal with. Mm -hmm. And you also had, people had no idea that the Upside Down even existed in mm -hmm. the first season. Now you have the idea of like, oh crap, they find Dart, they're like, oh, he's one of these many things. And they find him. They don't realize that there's this whole swarm mm -hmm. of them that's going to be there because they didn't realize that this gate has now opened up. I mean, we see it in the final episode. It's huge. The gate is like a mile deep. Like Eleven's got to close this gate that's a mile deep. Um, and so there's going to be a lot more stuff that's able to come through. So I kind of give them a pass on the whole like, oh, they were able to defeat because they really didn't defeat any of the dogs. Steve was able to smack a few and then they had to like pull, pull them out of there. Yeah. Um, because they, the only reason that they survived the whole, you know, putting this stuff on fire is because they all started coming back when Eleven was, you know, trying to close the mm -hmm. gate and stuff like that. So I think it's the series still did a good job of showing how inferior or how powerless we are to what that has and how Eleven is kind of like their savior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not in a sense of like she's like this, you know, religious figure <laughs> or something, but in the sense that like if she wasn't there, like they'd all be screwed. Like oh, you'd, you'd have to like nuke the town. But at the same time, they also save her and her mentality. Oh, look at oh, you! Oh, look at me! Look at you! But also, I <laughs> but also, kind of going back into it, it's also the introduction of one of my favorite duos, uh, Steve and Dustin. Absolutely. And I really liked how they were actually brought together. It wasn't because Dustin went out of his way and went to get it. It was kind of like a moment of desperation where yeah, it was kind of like... He can't find anybody stuff. else yeah. and, and Steve shows He's, up. It's like, ah, oh, you're good enough. Come on, Steve. Yeah, exactly. And can we just kind of also go to... Um, what's his name? Uh, Je Justin? Hmm? No. Justin's little sister? The sassy one? Oh, my go oh <laughs> Lucas's little sister? Lucas, yes. yes. Oh, my gosh. She might have been Erica. Erica was there, she yeah. was hilarious, and she did enough. Code red. Code <laughs> How about red. Code Shut Your Mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I loved her, and she did a really good job. She did a good job as the annoying sister or whatever. And it's, it's interesting because we didn't see... We literally didn't see Lucas's family the entire first season. I don't think we saw anybody except for Mike's and Will's families yeah. last yeah. season. Like I don't think we met Dustin's mom last season. We, we saw Barb's mom. Yeah. yeah. We saw, but that was like one yeah. like quick scene though, wasn't it? We yeah. knew. Yeah, we knew Dustin lived with his mom and mm -hmm. not with his dad. We knew that. We yes. didn't see Lucas or Dustin's house. Um, we saw Barb's mother, not her father. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, we saw her father. Did we? Yeah, it was the dinner. Remember? Well, no, I in season one. Oh, in so season one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. They definitely opened up a, more, a lot more of the family ties. Mm -hmm. What was super funny to me, too, is that Mike's mom now has totally changed her hairstyle for the for the times or whatever. Mm -hmm. Her father, in the first episode, was like, we're all patriots here, <laughs> as they're like going around the house bugging it. Yes. Mike's parents are like the most incompetent parents yeah. in the history of parents. I disagree. Too. What? Yeah? Because think about it. This is, what, the 80s? Mm -hmm. So... Kids are going out. There's no cell phones. There's no way of yeah. knowing. So literally back then when the parents are like, yeah, you can go hang out with your friends. You literally have no idea what your kids are doing. Well, but like, Listen here, people are parents. <laughs> age. You had all this free. <laughs> like, Mike, Mike and Nancy are both gone for multiple days without yeah. coming home. And like we see her answer the door when Billy comes up. And she doesn't even look phased by that. Yeah. She's just like, oh, hey, who's this young man? Yeah, well, I, think, I think that it's meant to be that way, though. I think mm -hmm. Mike and uh, Nancy's parents are meant to be no. shown as that character. They were honestly remind me of the G of Jimmy Neutron's parents from back <laughs> in the day, like because his dad is like kind of a bumbling idiot in that he's just always sleeping or unaware of what's going on all the time, and then his mother is just like out doing her own thing half the time. So it's just uh, uh, no, I totally get that that's supposed to be what they are. Yeah. I just think I just think it's funny that they are absolutely the most incompetent yeah. parents in the history of parents. But I do think it makes sense mm -hmm. in the context yeah. of like what the eighties was, or at least what yeah. we we perceive it to be from our parents, people that we know yeah. who grew up during that age, because we are all 
Yeah, and I think that's another Young. reason why I really love Stranger Things is because it's set back in the 80s. And, like, if we have Stranger Things set, like, nowadays, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be what it is today because um, with the Internet and cell phones, like, everything would be so easy. Yeah, and for them, it, the challenge is that they don't have all that. They have walkie-talkies and a bike. That's how they communicate. <laughs> and, and a radio. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, too, because it was like, oh, my God, why is everybody so split up? They can't just call each other on a exactly. cell phone. No, I get that. I just I just thought, think it's funny that his parents are so incompetent oh yeah no i think I, I think it's something good to point out yeah but let's move on to episode seven which was a big departure from everything else that was going very on. different um this is where we saw keela and her group Ooh, expand we saw part. 11 kind of go on her go out on her own after leaving from her quote-unquote mother's place um what did we think of episode seven i loved it i had mixed feelings I liked what they did, and I felt like it was necessary. Like, I felt most of the, the episodes in the season, all the episodes in the season were necessary for the story. Um, but it just, it felt different, and it didn't feel like Stranger Things to me at times. I, agree, I feel yeah. this would have been better if they treated it like every other episode. I think the fact that it was one story they focused on for the entire episode is what, what it kind of threw me off. If they did it like they usually do and they mix it in with the other stories, you know, there's Nancy and Jonathan, or there's the... You know, Steve and Dustin or something like that. I just think the fact that it focused on the one story the entire episode kind of threw me off a little bit. I'm not saying it was necessarily bad because I did enjoy the episode. It just wasn't as good as I think the rest, some of the other episodes of the season. I, I kind of feel the same way. I'd st it started out, I remember saying to myself when it started, I was like, oh, hell yeah, we're getting a different kind of show this episode. Mm -hmm. And then like 30 minutes into it, I was like, all right, can we do, can I, can I find out what else is happening now? Like I wanted to go back. I feel like if they would have kept it to a 20, 25 minute segment in like one of the episodes, like made it half or a third of a single episode. Like, like have it be the main story of an episode, but still show other things. I, like, I enjoyed it. It just yeah. felt too stretched out. For I me. think it was more of a setup for future se seasons mm -hmm. because, um, of course, episode one, we see Keela for the first time. So obviously sometime in that season, you had to find out more about her. And so when uh, Jane goes and finds her sister, Keela, like, I think it's basically a, it grows um, Eleven into what she is now. Yeah. More, she learns how to use her power more, how to control it more. She finds out more about her sister and her mission, which kind of goes off into um, what's it called? Into like what will be happening in the future, yeah. trying to hunt down everyone. And it also brings the question of: Is her dad alive? Yeah. Yes, it does. It does raise that question because you know that's that's one of the things I'm actually most curious now. Uh, in season three is if he's still alive because mm -hmm. um, I think because like I don't know I get the impression that she dis does still kind of love him like her father it's like a mm -hmm. Stockholm yeah. syndrome kind of thing but but like she hates what he did to her but she still cares about him I yeah. cried during that episode yeah, I, mean, I did I, I was like to think that your father who abused you and did all this stuff to you was dead and then to have someone else who you were literally about to kill tell you no he's mm -hmm. not and to find out that this person that you kind of fear is still out there, it just like, whew. It just like, yeah. ooh, just I can't yeah. even describe it with words. It's just, it gives me this feeling like of what's she gonna do? Is she gonna follow um, Keila's footsteps and hunt down her father and kill him? Yeah. The thing for me is I almost would have preferred instead of the ending that we had for this season, like, you know, what we saw, the foreshadowing, stuff like that, I almost would have preferred if, you know how in episode one we see Keela and then we don't see her again mm -hmm. for a long time. I almost would have preferred them not to bring her up again until the very last episode and have that as the end cap. Like, mm -hmm. Eleven goes and seeks her out and finds her. I know that's, that'll change up the whole arc of the way the story goes mm -hmm. currently, but honestly, like, I would have much preferred having, like, oh, there's other people out there and that'd be mm -hmm. the last thing. Because I feel like that would have been a more exciting lead-in inst instead of them basically repeating what they did in season one, which is like, oh, there's still a chance something's over there. Mm -hmm. I, I get that, but I, I feel like the way this season ended, it was meant to be an upbeat ending, and then with the kind of, oh, hey, there's still this upside down. Yeah. I don't think they were trying to end on some massive cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, and, and going off of that, I think her meeting a, or Kilo was one of the biggest driving factors of the latter half of that mm -hmm. season. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what you necessarily do to replace that. Yeah. Um, at that part of the. And that's the story. thing. I'm just. I'm just saying hypothetically. Like. Yeah. I think it would have been really cool if like you would have ended like she's really happy because she's like, 
oh, there's other people out see, here. See, I disagree. I think it was necessary to have that in the middle just because it did a lot in her in um, Eleven's character development mm -hmm. just because she learned that, hey, it's okay to have these powers. Hey, I can harness these powers and I can make myself more powerful if I just focus on my anger. And also, it just... The whole entire character change where she's, uh, as they quote it, bitchin'. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <And> <laughs> <laughs> the whole MTV punk look. That was yes. like the best thing when they all did like the walkout and she's like, you know, you know, sh stuff's about to go down when she's coming out in all black looking like with that wall like, hey. Yeah, you know, she like looked that. badass, can I just say. She looked like she was part of the group. Mm -hmm. Like the little, um, it's a group, you know? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the death of Bob. Um, Aye, Bob. <laughs> and, the tra and the tragedy that is the last couple of episodes. Oh. Um, yeah, so Bob are triumphant computer code understander who works at Radio Shack tragically <laughs> dies right after we figure out, oh my God, he's a great guy. Um, yes. Yeah, so how did you how did you feel about his, because up to that point, for me, no significant character had died. You had a bunch yeah. of random soldiers that mm -hmm. kind of got offed by the demodogs and stuff like that, but no one of significance had died. He was the big one for, for the mm -hmm. season that kind of just went. H how did we think that was handled? I think, like, I think how they, I think it's really cool because they introduced Bob in this season. So automatically we're kind of like, who is this guy? We don't know much about him. And throughout the season we see who he is and you're kind of like wondering, is he bad? Is he good? But by the end of it, you're kind of like, Bob is a good guy. He's that nerdy boyfriend that um, Will's mom really needed and the fact that in the end he's kind of evolves from this nerdy guy to like, yeah, I'm a superhero and I can help mm. you guys and be superhero, there for you guys. What, what uh, Bob, yeah. whatever, superhero. Yeah, and well, so he did. Bob end Newman, up, superhero. Yes. Yeah. And uh, at the end, it was kind of like really great because he goes out and like he basically saves everyone. He has this moment with Hopper where he's like, hey, you need to make sure that they're okay before me. Yeah. And then they like give you this false hope where everything's gonna be he fine. I knew as soon as he turned though, he was gonna die. Oh, like, I as soon as they did that, yeah. as soon as they did that, as soon as it was shot. just just him and Joyce in the, in the and still in there and everybody else else, I'm like, he's gone. Yeah. yeah, actually, my roommate um called it out. She was like, he's gonna die, and she hasn't even watched the whole mm -hmm. season. Um, I, well, I think the thing with Bob is. I felt like there was only one of two ways his season was going to end. It was either going to be with him turning or him dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's simply because I think they're clearly going in the direction of Joyce and Hopper. Mm -hmm. um, oh, absolutely. Oh, for yeah. sure. So, I mean, you can't have you can't have Bob in the way. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. But <laughs> you can't have Bob in the way. Winona Ryder's got to have her Hopper. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't break Bob's heart. You really can't. He's yeah. just too sweet. So. I'm about to say. I mean, so, so for me, <laughs> he, he, can't, he can't change his arc like so, Steve. So, he's already had a good place. So for me, once it was established that episode, that like, hey, he's a genuinely mm -hmm. good guy, I'm like, well, he's going to die this yeah. episode. Um, and it, it was it was it still sucked even though I kind of saw it coming a little bit I, yeah. I, in that episode I was still kind of like ah, I don't want Bob to die I really like this guy he's just such a nice guy yeah so after that after the death of Bob everybody kind of reconvenes back at um, Will Will's house Will Joyce uh, everybody it comes back together um, and we see them kind of getting ready for we saw it in the trailers where like you know, Nancy gets the gun or whatever, and they're all kind of ready because they're worried that the, the dogs are headed their way because mm -hmm. um, Will kind of told them where they were at or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but then we see walk in Eleven with her little bloody nose and just kills the dog immediately. It destroys And the fact that that's the first time that Mike gets to see Eleven because mm -hmm. we know that she gets to see him because she goes into the void, and not only in the void, she goes to see him out in the school, which yeah. is where she sees him with Max and... She has that little, like, who is this girl? Yeah, where she just, in episode nine, she just brushes past me. Yeah. She's like, introduce yeah. herself. She's like, you. That's one <laughs> thing I wish they would have um, emphasized more. Because even after, like, she finds, after, like, at the last episode, she still, to me, Eleven and Max are like, yeah. we hate each other. I just don't think that she's been around enough to know the history of, like, like, mm. clearly she... We didn't. We see at the end of episode nine that like when everybody's at the dance together and everybody's dancing, there is no moment where Eleven sees Lucas and Max together. Mm -hmm. There's no moment where she like can reconvene and be like, "Oh, this isn't a thing." 
all she's seen in like the one time that she escaped and like saw Mike outside of this before episode eight slash nine is that he's with this new girl and he's smiling about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she just throws Max off her board while she's like zooming because she's the zoomer yeah. around the gym. Um, so I, I think I think I understand why she still had that animosity or whatever because there's literally, literally Eleven had no time. She sees Mike, they hug. Mike and Hopper have this big argument inside. You liar, you liar, yeah. you liar. You know, she's been here for a year or whatever. And then Eleven has to go out and close the gate. Like, that's yeah. that's literally yeah. what it was. And it's kind of heartbreaking because, like, for me, Mike and Eleven are, like, each other's first love. And, like, they don't know they're in love, though, like, because they're little kids still. Yeah. And it's... it's they know. <laughs> they, they know. know. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. It's just... It's honestly heartbreaking because, like, you see Mike's face, like... Honestly, you see Mike throughout the season, and you see Mike in the beginning. He's not Mike. He's, he's that emo middle schooler he that is. can't get emo out of that Mike. Season, The thing with Mike this season is I feel like for at least the first six, seven episodes, he almost took a backseat to other characters. Yeah. Where mm-hmm. he was he was the focal point of the last season, him and Eleven. I feel like the main focal points this season were Eleven, Hopper, and then you kind of had Joyce and Bob's relationship. And then, you know, even, like, I feel like Dustin was more – was more of a front and center than with a mic was for the majority no of the season. With that. I didn't mind it at all. I just think it's kind of emphasizes the fact that he feels a little distant from everybody since Eleven's kind of been gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's literally sad. Like he lost mm-hmm. someone who he he loved basically, yeah. and so we kind of see him struggle with that. And then not only that, um, when he first sees her, he's like. He's kind of like, I've been trying to, like, it's it's kind of that reuniting moment, and you're kind of like, finally, like, mm-hmm. this is finally happening. Yeah. Um, the the one scene I did want to talk about from episode eight um, was after after Bob dies, and they all go back to the house, mm-hmm. and they start, like, questioning Will almost. Yeah. When they all start talking about him, trying to get him to remember everything. I feel like that was that was one of those really powerful the realization scenes. realization that he's on him. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then, like, you kind of, because he's sitting there, and he's, like, his face, it looks like he's kind of fighting. And then, like, he starts tapping on the chair and everything. I thought that was, that scene, that was really well done. It was well done. Um, And then then the callback to the phone and the phone ring being, you know, how he figured out where they were and sending the dogs after them. I thought all that was really well done. Yeah. And then uh, episode nine was just one of those kind of, so much went on that it was just, you had the exorcism, quote unquote, of Will, uh, which was a crazy scene. Oh. Um, you had Eleven obviously closing the gate and stuff. Episode episode nine was over an hour long. Like it, it was, was the longest really? episode. Yeah, it was the longest episode. You don't realize it because you were just trying to get through it. Literally, or like some it episodes were together. like forty seven minutes. I think there was like an hour and five minutes. You know, yeah, when I, it was late yeah. when I was like one thirty two in the morning on Saturday, and I had two episodes left, mm-hmm. and I was like. I looked at the time and it was like an hour. I'm like, I'm not gonna watch this tonight. I got a whole other day. And we haven't we haven't talked about it much, but this is also the episode where we see Max confront Billy, um, Billy being oh. I guess the new King Steve, uh, who hates this town. Uh, a little bit of background, you know, with Billy and Max is like mm-hmm. they they show more and more. I think in episode seven of like the way the reason why Billy is the way he is is because yeah. his stepdad is such an asshole. Not stepdad. Um, it's his real dad. Is it? No, no. I thought, no, I thought it was his mom and his stepdad moved. And they left his dad in California. I'm pretty sure that's oh, what was it was. Oh, was that how it was? Yeah. I thought it was... No, because he says Max is not my, my sister. Yeah. So I thought... That's Billy's... Or, okay, Billy, that's his real dad. It's Max's stepdad, excuse me. Yes, me okay, there him. you go. Because um, the way you were describing yeah. I was like, wait. But no. yeah, so we see his dad um, is an asshole to him. Yeah. An absolute yeah. piece of crap. So... Yeah. Well, the, it, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like it, it mm-hmm. we see Billy from like the beginning, and we're like, "Wow, he's a butthole! Like he's a jerk." He's a, he's kind of a psychopath. It, yeah. He is. He's that. He's basically the human villain of mm-hmm. the Stranger Things season two, which was Steve in season one. Yeah. And so um, now that we have this guy, but you also see his charming side, which I thought was really cool. Him with Him Nancy's, with mom. Nancy's mom. So like, she was like, oh dear, cause I'm in my robe. <laughs> she was reading, like yeah. she was reading a romance novel. And if you notice the front cover, looks exactly like Billy. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it was so funny. That was one of the funniest slash cringiest scenes. I was about to say, I'm watching times, I'm like, ah. Uh, I, was, I, I was feeling it. I was <laughs> Thank like, you, Mrs. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know, Billy was like that character to me. Like, if he wasn't such a completely horrible and psychotic person, he's still, he's a badass. 
Yeah. Like, you know, like that scene where he's... 22 second you know, stand. He's, he's lifting weights while, while smoking, smoking a cigarette, <laughs> then finishes smoking the cigarette, lifting the weights, and just starts drinking a beer. I'm like... That's what I want to be, except not be uh, a butthole like like him. But we know? realize why he's a butthole mm-hmm. is because of his dad and how yeah. he beats him. Still not him. a full excuse, but no, absolutely. But we also see Max take him down in episode. Well, I think one of the craziest. Cool. Thing. Another scene that was interesting to me was um, him and Steve when they kind of talk together after after that practice, and he kind of seems like he's trying to be friendly to Steve in a way, mm-hmm. um, which I, I I don't know what to make of that considering the, what happened the rest of the season, but. I don't know. I feel like that was an interesting scene just because, you know, he's not seeming like an incredibly large but <laughs> See, I didn't see that as that scene. I didn't see it as him being friendly. I saw it as him literally being a jerk. Like he's like, "Oh, you don't need Nancy cuz there's plenty of fish in the sea." There's plenty of and, bitches in the sea. Yeah, and then he's like, "I'll make sure to leave some for you." I'm yeah. like, "Oh, you're such a jerk. I don't like you." Well, I feel like I don't know. I feel like it was him being nice and supportive to Steve in, mm-hmm. in the only way he knows how and he's not going to be like super perfect and sensitive but he's going to be like ah cheer up man there's there's plenty of other, other fish in the sea I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was reflective of Steve in season one mm-hmm. too like Steve realized like oh shit I really was this kind of asshole like Steve as a boyfriend is a different story because we saw like mm-hmm. he tried to do everything for Nancy um, clearly very hurt when the whole drunk scene with her where she's like our relationship everything we do it's bullshit um and set up I still can't get over that her and Jonathan are now together we we kind of breezed over that when they went to the dude's house but I still remember Jonathan as like the creepy pervert who took photos yeah I know and it still creeps me out a little bit that she's just like still wildly infatuated with this dude especially because Steve like genuinely cared about her you know Mm -hmm. I think he still does too Um, and love is weird we will say that but I still like the whole like Oh yeah, we're cool with the pervert dude now. I'm kind of. Oh. I mean, everyone kind. I saw it coming. Yeah. I was like, especially. Oh. Oh, yeah. I think everyone kind of saw it coming, where it's like, yeah, she's with this guy, but everyone wants her with yeah. Jonathan. And I don't. I don't see it as like. I didn't. It's not like I didn't see it coming. I just like. I'm still kind of uneasy about the situation. I, like I it's something that. I feel like the show glances over a little bit. Like not that you have to be politically correct. Like mm-hmm. all you know, a hundred percent of the time. But like, I don't know if I'd be okay. Like if my yeah. like sister got together with a dude who like used to stalk her or something like that's kind of weird um i i can totally see that and i kind of have that feeling a little bit too Mm -hmm. but i i kind of i'm like but he's such a nice guy outside of that you know um but but going back to to billy and steve i think one thing i want to kind of touch on real quick is the one thing they did really well with a lot of these new characters is they used them as kind of a contradiction or almost a mirror for some of the mm-hmm. other characters. Yeah. Obviously, you have that with, with Keela and Eleven. You have that with Billy and Steve. I think you even have it to an extent with, with Bob and Hopper. Exactly. Um, yeah. And I think that they, that's a great use of new characters like yeah. that. And Lucas and um, Yes. Destiny. Yeah, and Lucas and, 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 and Max. I think I think they did that the really well with the, the kind of contradiction of what these characters are. And, and, and they can still kind of I'll be good people no matter kind of where you come from. All right, mm-hmm. so we're running a little bit short on time. Let's talk about episode nine, the wrap-up. Was the ending of this season satisfying enough for you, personally? Because I know the gate closure thing for me, where it's just like, oh, no, like I was really excited to see maybe she couldn't get it closed on her own. Like maybe somebody mm-hmm. else had to come in and help intervene, but she got it, and I felt I felt like it was a little kind of, a little too perfect in, in some mm-hmm. aspects. I, I don't have a problem because they set up for it with season, with episode seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they kind of like, you know, this is how you can use your power, like strengthen your powers and use your powers to be stronger. It's and like the opposite of and she's Yeah, and she's, <laughs> she's thinking through all that stuff as yeah. she's closing the gate. So I don't have a huge issue with that. Um, I also don't think the monster, I think the monster was kind of resigned to the fact like, okay, after like he escaped Will's body, he's like, okay, maybe this isn't going to work. I'm going to go recover yeah, and then I'll see y'all on the flip side. Oh, um, <laughs> oh a theory. Oh, theory. But but um, <laughs> but um, also one of the things from that season finale is when the, all the kids are in the tunnel. I genuinely thought for a second when when uh, when Dustin got tripped up for a second, I'm like, that's going to be the cliffhanger for the next season. Is one of these kids is going to get trapped in the upside down? Oh. And it's going to be like that again. That's what I thought was going to happen with Hopper. I thought Hopper was going to be trapped till the mm-hmm. very end. Uh, well, I, I, so I thought they were going to set that up for, like, season three. I thought he was going to be, going to be Steve. I thought Steve might actually die at the damn end. Damn it, man. Oh, that would have no. sucked. That I thought, can't kill off two really, 
you can't kill off two characters that you're really, really touched with. That's like a Walking Dead move. <laughs> like, you, no, see, that's the thing I'm used to because, you know, Game of Thrones is my favorite TV show. So it's like, yeah. oh, we kill off two of your favorite characters in one episode? No that's, big deal. That's okay. Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> but still, I'm, I'm almost yeah. like, I'm almost used to it now. Because I don't watch tons of TV shows, but Game of Thrones is like the one I, I watch. But yeah. we, see, we see in the epilogue, um, just to wrap things up, like uh, the Forge birth certificate. And then uh, Dr. Owens, who mm-hmm. is such so much better than Brenner. Absolutely. Um, yes. Telling Hopper, like, give it another year and you're like oh and i'm like there's the explanation for how long the shoot is gonna take <laughs> like there it is well like, here's another thing like basically 11 is trapped again and mm-hmm. she can't go out but she gets that one night and that one night is yeah. the snowball dance which i thought they did the setting and like all the Everything music choices was, was pretty great yeah, beautiful no. and i love dustin oh my gosh i love dustin at the dance how he's with um, so Steve picks him up and he has the little he has yeah. his hair done like uh, Steve. But Steve Steve drops him off and it, it's just like it's, that's his final like soccer mom moment. Yeah. Like, go get and him. He <laughs> does his little growl. It's yeah. adorable. And then he goes into the dance. He's like, okay, you guys, like here I go. Mm-hmm. And he goes to like the prettiest girl and like he's like, hey, you want to dance? And, and then she like, no. he gets rejected several times. And that's when he kind of realizes he's like, oh. Yeah. I'm not Steve. <laughs> and he gets really sad, and then Nancy. I thought Nancy coming over and dancing with him was like the perfect thing. Yeah. And you saw the foreshadowing in the beginning, like as soon as he walks in, when Nancy goes, "Oh, hey," you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, she's just like, "Yeah, don't worry, girls are stupid right now. You'll knock them dead in a few years." And I thought that mm-hmm. was like kind of a cool thing because Dustin's kind of been like the definition of that bullied character or whatever. Yeah. He didn't have any teeth. Now he has teeth. He's super happy about it. But he's still like the hair thing, which mm-hmm. he thought was really cool. He's still not Steve, yeah. so people are making fun of him for yeah. just stuff like this. I feel like out of all those main characters, he's kind of the most stereotypically like nerdy. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know, um, at least from like the '80s, '90s sense of the word. Yeah, um, but they that, all are. So. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they all are. Um, but that that the end of that the uh, season, I really loved what they did with the snowball. I thought it was like, it was a nice it was a nice way to go out. I think mm-hmm. it was like you know I'm like. Oh, this is so cute. They're all adorable. Look at them in their little middle school dance. And their Let's first fl- kisses. And then flip the school. Yeah, then it's like, oh, hey, upside down. Yeah, yeah. The, the Lucas and Max kiss was probably the, the best mm-hmm. one, yes. honestly. You know, it wasn't originally supposed to happen. Ah. It, it was mm. kind of like they went up to stage, and then um, the girl who played Max freaked out when um, one of the Duffer brothers was like, oh, you ready for your kiss scene? And since she freaked out, he was like, okay, now you're definitely doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it worked very well, and okay. I loved it. And especially, this is also the the second time Mike and Eleven meet. Yeah. And it's kind of like they have this moment and it's very different from the first time they see each other in the uh, at Will's house. It's very like the first time was like, oh, you're alive and yeah. like this is, and you kind of expect the first kiss to be mm-hmm. there and then Daddy Hopper was like, um, no, like yeah. you're my daughter, you're not kissing a boy. And we see we see the <laughs> Hopper and Joyce thing kind of come together more yeah. in the parking lot mm-hmm. with the sharing the sacred at the thing again. Um, so I think, I think it was a great wrap up. Um, Real quick before we go, where do we think season three starts off? Do we think it's right at the snowball? Do we think we have another year pass? What do we What do we think is going to go on? I think honestly, we're going to start with either uh, Kaylee and her squad of criminals, mm-hmm. or we're going to see someone else from the one through ten, ah. basically. And we're going to. I think it. See, Stranger Things is going to turn more to like hey, we're going to get revenge on Hawkins' lab or something's going to happen where... It is eventually going to happen where some there's going to be another gate opened to the upside-down world. Mm. Gotcha. Billy? Um, well, one thing I kind of want them to do in Season 3 is, is touch on, on, on Brenner and kind of go back to what you said you wanted to end the season with. The, w- the way I kind of wish they would end the season is instead of like turning it upside-down, I would have loved to see like a quick flash at the end of the season of Brenner still being alive, working in a lab somewhere oh, yeah. on something. I would have loved to see that Ooh. as a setup for season three. I never thought of something like that. Yeah, and, and I really hope that that's the direction they go with season three, is kind of have that be one of the main storylines, is them trying to find him and, and, and uh, Eleven kind of having to deal with him being back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would love if, I know it's really hard to do because of how long it takes to shoot and the age of people rapidly growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, we're, ta- we're talking about uh, Finn Wolfhard or whatever his name is, the guy who plays yeah. Mike, is already 14. So he's, he's already, already, yeah, so he's already a freshman in, in high school by our age standards. Um, and if they advance a year, yeah, that'll be fine because he'll be set up to do that. 
but they're starting to look a lot older than most middle schoolers look. Yeah. So it's it's starting to begin that struggle. So I would love to see them pick right up from the snowball dance. Like something happens with the upside down, or something happens with that you know hive mind thing, and it happens right there, and they pick up right there. But I more than likely see it being another yeah. year type thing. Yeah. I think it's at at least going to be another year. I, th- I mostly because I don't think they're going to do another season where eleven has to stay locked up and everything. I oh, think for sure. they're going to have next season her being out and involved in things, Trying you know, to be with normal. everybody. Yeah, I think that would I think that could be a major driving point in next season. Her kind of just adjusting to the world and living in the world, mm-hmm. you know. Gotcha. Um, and I think. I don't think they can necessarily shoot right from the pickup because mm-hmm. they still have to probably write season three, I'm assuming, and shoot season from three. From what I understand, they already have the show planned out for four seasons. Yeah. You, well, um, do, do they have they're, it like... They're just waiting for the fourth season approval. They're already approved for season three, yes. obviously. Do, do, so do they have it all written, or is it just kind of like I'm an pretty outline? sure they have most of it, at I, least story Yeah, written. I think they've already... Um, not written it, but like they already have it planned mm-hmm. out, like yeah. little inside. And of course, you can fact check check us on that. Uh, uh, yeah, with please. The internet, where <laughs> it's, you know, all that yeah. stuff. But I think it's a good wrap up point. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, so this has been point. the Stranger Things season two spoiler cast, the Spinnaker spoiler cast. I have been Logan Anstead, joined by Alexander Torres Perez and Billy Glenn. Right, and we will see you guys on the next Spinnaker spoiler cast. Thank you for watching slash listening.